Okay. <laughs> we'll uh, call the uh, meeting to order. Invocation will be by uh, Jerry Ferguson, our police department chaplain, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the student of the month, Liam. <clears throat> Let's pray. Because we all have direct access to our Heavenly Father, I'm going to spend just a moment in silent prayer for each of you to address however you would like. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of love, the way you express it to us in many ways and allow us to love others because of the love that you give us. Thank you, Father, for our mayor and this council, for their years of influence upon our community. We are better because they have served. We thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of giving that we see at this time. And it's not because of what we're getting, but because of the joy that we give to other people. Thank you, Father, for our first responders and for our military, especially those that will be working on the day when families get together and so many that can't even be with their families. We thank you for their willingness to serve. We do pray, Father, for our incoming mayor and our incoming council members. We pray for wisdom. We ask that you would guide them just as you've guided us down through these days. Father, we thank you for the new year and the opportunities that it brings us. We recognize that we are what we are because of who you are, and we're able to give because of what we've received. Let us be a blessing to one another and be the gift to one another that you give to us and allow us to be. Guide us tonight in our meeting. We'll give you praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chaplain, and thank you, Liam. Okay, next item is a roll call, Diane. Mayor Skoog. Present. Vice Mayor Nye. Here. Councilmember Anderson. Here. Councilmember Grossman. I'm here. Councilmember Mallory. Here. Councilmember Rooney. Here. And Councilmember Whiting. Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Dan. Okay, scheduled announcements and presentations. First one, Chamber of Commerce Holiday Event Report. Gloria, you are up. Thank you for letting us come and share what's been going on and some of the fun stuff. Uh, It's always a privilege to be here, Mayor and Council. Thank you for letting us do this. Um, I wanted to give a little report, an update on our Holiday Festival of Lights. It was amazing. If you guys didn't come out, you really missed it because the lights were just fantastic. Uh, We had moved it to December 30th because of the conflicts on the calendar, the way the the months, both December and November, uh, fell, uh, fell on the calendar, and it was just easier to move it to a better day. So it was earlier for us this year than what is normal, but it still, it was perfect weather. It was just a little cool toward the end, but it was a wonderful night if you missed it. Uh, we had three choirs that performed that night. Coyote Springs Elementary Choir, Bradshaw Mountain Middle School Choir, and the Liberty Traditional Eagle School, Liberty Traditional School Eagles Club Choir. Uh, They're a new club that just started over there, and they did a really good job. It was great. Of course, our mayor gave his wonderful um, address to all of us, his message in Marnie Ridd the night before Christmas. Then we did the countdown uh, to the the lights, and that was was wonderful. Kudos to our um, parks and our public works department, because they're the ones that put it all together, and it was was wonderful, more beautiful than ever. We had 52 uh, entrants in the parade. I mean, that's more than we had last year, so it was great. Everything went smoothly. Um, We did have some wonderful award winners. Our schools was Humboldt Elementary School and Coyote Springs Elementary School. Our civic and church was Desert Valley Girl Scouts and Animal Rescue Sanctuary. 
And then, of course, the musical was Bradshaw Mountain Marching Bears and Bradshaw Mountain Middle School. Independent business was B&M Quality Landscaping and Maintenance and Lonesome Valley Brewing, their first time in being in our parade. Corporate was Finley Subaru. They really came through this year, and then Walmart. And then our last was Chamber Holiday Award. That We pick ones that we think are really worthy of, of getting an award, and that was Yavapai Plumbing and, and Heating, Yavapai Mechanical, that's all together, and then Newman High Country Doors. We want, couldn't do this without our sponsors, APS, uh, YRMC, uh, they're amazing, asphalt paving and supplies, helped with all the planning. Again, thank you to Parks and Rec, the Police Department, the Public Works, and of course our Chamber Board of Directors and everybody that was there and helped with that. It was amazing. So thank you for letting me share and we'll be sharing next month about our Valley of Lights and how that's gone. So don't forget, Valley of Lights is open until the 30th so you can still make it. So go out there and View those lights. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Next report, library spotlight report. Casey. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Hopefully, I'll lift the microphone up just a shade. Hopefully this works. It's an internet where it's having problems, so let's hope this works. Okay, this is our library annual report for 2017 and 18. It was a little late this year, um, but we had some uh, uh, issues with getting, count, uh, not council, our library board together um, uh, due to some vacancies and stuff. So this is our finished report. This is what we call an infographic. So an infographic is less wordy. I know there's words there, but it's less wordy, detailed on some of our, you know, highlights of the year as opposed to a big, thick book of what we've done. So I'm going to go through this quickly because I know we're busy tonight. So uh, this past year, we checked over 406,000 materials. Um, that's um, pretty huge. This next year, we're already uh, going to surpass that. Our circ is already up 18%. Computer usage is huge at our library. Uh, last year we had over 53,000 users um, on our internet. That is amazing. Um, looking at other cities that are comparable in our size, um, you know, in, in our smaller town, um, computers are just huge uh, anywhere. You know, a lot of people, especially in a small rural community, um, people think everyone has access to computers. They do not. Um, that's why we have the usage that we have. I want to point out the grants that we received last year. Um, we had programming in a box. That was a teen program. Uh, we received a grant of $2,500. Um, we also received Wi-Fi hotspot grant. We were able to purchase 23 Wi-Fi hotspots that families could check out for free. That was so popular that we reapplied for the grant and we, we um, we're awarded it. We found out last week that we are awarded the grant again this year. So um, we won't have as much to check out 23, but we will have money for 15 hotspots. And again, we had a huge waiting list for those hotspots, so people are desperately trying to get internet access at their home. Our door traffic, meaning we had over uh, almost 3,000 people um, visit our library. We, we will definitely surpass that again. This, we will definitely, uh, we're over, or, or it's going to be at least 43%, um, especially now that we're opening on Sundays. Um, our door, door traffic is increasing tremendously already. And of course, our volunteers. We have over 100 volunteers in the library, which is the largest um, volunteer group in the town. And we're extremely very proud of all the hard work that they do. Uh, we recently had a meet and greet uh, last month, and we had over 20 new volunteers apply to be at the library. So we're very, very happy about that. Um, of course, our digital community. We are on Facebook, Instagram. Um, one of our most popular posts, I, I know it may sound silly, but we have T-Rex as our visiting librarian. 
Um, he didn't make the parade. His costume broke this year. So, um, But uh, in, in May of 2018, we um, uh, launched our new website, which was extremely popular, and we're able to get onto Google Analytics with all this great data. So we'll have uh, more information for the next year on the usage of that website. But it, it already has a lot of use. Of course, you all, all know we're part of the Yavapai Library Network. Um, we receive funding from the county for books, materials, and um, operational costs. So we're uh, very, very lucky to be part of an amazing library, uh, library county library system. We also have adult literacy program. We have 49 tutors working with over 53 students to help them um, read. Uh, again, a lot of people don't realize that we have adults in the community who do not know how to read. So this is an extremely successful and valuable program at the library. And this program is all run by volunteers only. Our summer reading program, of course, is extremely successful. Considering the size of our community, we had over 315 participants in the children and 66 um, teens participate, which is really phenomenal for our teen population here. And of course, the largest program to celebrate the 40th year anniversary was our, no, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. That was the um, Comic-Con. But we had um, the Solar Eclipse program, which was, we had over, gosh, I got ahead of myself. I got to back up some. <laughs> um, we had um, a huge amount of people at, I think, over a thousand people, schools um, in the community, which was huge. And uh, Jenny Kim, who's no longer with us, who I love and miss dearly, she planned this whole event, and it was tremendously successful, and we couldn't be more proud of it. So, and those are just the highlights for the year. Any questions? Questions, Laura? Um, I do have a really important question. Yes. All the cringes in the world that are saying libraries are dead and dying have never visited our library. No. So how do we uh, tell the cringes out there that they need to come visit and learn a lesson? Well, we are still doing our community um, assessment where we're going out to the community and telling them about all the great programs and opportunities that we have here at the library. Also, during the budget open house, of course, I'm a huge advocate, um, you know, and I ask people, why don't you use the library? You know, a lot of them, well, they buy books, but once I tell them, well, why buy, why download, you can get all of that for free, download books, they don't understand, especially we have two, we just uh, put up a new 3D printer. Uh, people don't understand, what, you have a 3D printer at the library? We have two at the library, we have a digital media lab. So once I start talking to folks and telling them the value and what we offer here, um, they're pretty, they're pretty uh, blown away by everything that we offer. Thank you, Casey, for making our library a point of pride. Very welcome. Thank you. Mary? You know, I just want to say that um, our library is just amazing. And I want to thank you. And, you know, um, a library is a place where you can come and communicate with each other, sit down, see each other, talk to each other. Um, we do need that. It's important. Agreed. And uh, so I appreciate this. And uh, I hope that library is around for a long, long time. I think they will. I sure hope so. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Jody? May I just make a statement? You may. Well, I was recently up in the children's section of the library. And I have, I'm card carrying, and I'm grateful to have a library card. It has meant a lot to me since I was a child. In the library section of the, for the children's department, two of your staff met me so graciously and were so helpful. And it's not an area I visit very often, Casey, because, you know, my kids aren't little anymore. <laughs> However, I was in there looking for grandchildren for information, like on videos and books that were age appropriate. And when she told me, yeah, you can check out 50 of them, and I'm like, oh. I had no idea, which was wow. wonderful. Uh, but I was just so, just so pleased at how gracious. I mean, here I was, novice to that area, and they were. They took me by the hand and showed me what I needed to do. And that's what I have found with our library staff as well. And I want you know, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that too. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else? 
excuse me. No, I just, and just really quick, it's, we've had a lot of staff changes in the last year. Of course, Stuart retired, Ted left. Um, so it was a very challenging year and I've had a great uh, leadership behind me. My new management staff have really stepped up, stepped up to help out. So um, I'm really grateful for that. So. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is the uh, Life Saving Award. Start with start with uh, Brendan Fa uh, Frost. Somebody's phone is up here. It's yours now. <laughs> Did you leave your phone? Good evening, Mayor, Council. I have a couple of uh, life-saving awards to give out tonight. Uh, Officer Brandon Frost, can you come up for him? You want to take them both or just one? You want to take them one at a time. Okay. They're different. They're separate incidents. So the first one, let me just say, the life-saving award is awarded to recognize the actions of department personnel that result in the saving or preservation of human life that otherwise would have been lost without the employee's direct involvement. On September 25th, at about uh, 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning, Prescott Valley police officers responded to an injury car accident at the intersection of Glassford Hill and Florentine Drive. Upon arrival, officers found a severe crash scene, two vehicles, one with uh, heavy damage. A male subject who had just been released from the hospital was attempting to make a right-hand turn on the Glassford Hill Road, and as he turned right, he, he was struck by a full-size truck on the driver's door at approximately 35 miles per hour. The vehicle sustained at least uh, 15 inches of crush, that means the penetration, into the car. The driver was severely injured and bleeding profusely from his left arm. Officer Brandon Foss was the first officer to contact the driver. He needed a tourniquet, however, he did not want to leave the driver. So instead of waiting for a tourniquet, Officer Frost used his hands and held pressure in the injury, slowing the bleeding. Officer Frost actually placed his finger into the driver's wound found the artery and held pressure on it until medical personnel arrived and assisted. Based on his actions, uh, the, the subject made a full recovery and um, uh, his actions are deserving of the Life Saving Award. Thank you. Next one is uh, Life Saving Award, Robert Brown. I hope I can say this right. I need uh, Sergeant Rob Brown and Michaela Adams. I hope I said that right. We have two awards here, um, Mayor. First is a life-saving award, and also during the same incident, we are giving a Good Samaritan life-saving award to a civilian, which is Michaela Adams, for helping out Sergeant Brown in this incident. So we've already talked about what the life-saving award is. On uh, October 22nd, at about 9.03 in the morning, officers were dispatched to a one-vehicle accident with injuries at Windsong and Lakeshore. Sergeant Brown was just leaving the Civic Center and responded to the crash. Upon arrival, he observed a vehicle in the a field on the southeast corner of the intersection. There were two people standing by the vehicle. As Sergeant Brown stopped, a female, later identified as Michaela Adams, yelled that the subject was not breathing and then knelt, knelt down to start CPR. Sergeant Brown ran over and received a briefing that the vehicle drove off the roadway and stopped in the field. A male and female went to check on the driver who was unresponsive. They called 911 broke out the window, unlocked the door, and pulled the male driver out. He was in his 80s and had no pulse. Sergeant Brown confirmed that the subject was not breathing and had no pulse and also began CPR. Officer Hepper Hepperly arrived on scene, and then Sergeant Brown continued CPR for approximately 10 minutes. I don't know if you realize how long that is to That's perform so CPR. He continued CPR even after Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority arrived, allowing them to set up their equipment and administer an external defibrillator. 
When the subject was transported to YRMC East, he had a pulse and he was breathing. Due to the uh, quick actions of the civilians on scene and Sergeant Brown, the individual is alive today. For his actions, Sergeant Brown is presented with the Department Life Saving Award and we are also presenting Michaela Adams with the Good Samaritan Life Saving Award through the city. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, next is a December Student of the Month, Liam Craig, Mr. Whiting. Are you going to get your family up there too, Liam? <laughs> okay. Well, if you're not aware, this is the fourth, well, it isn't the fourth Thursday of the month. This is a December uh, council meeting where we're doing our Youth of the Month a little earlier. And it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Liam Craig, and he's our outstanding uh, student of the month for December. And we're here to kind of address some of the things that uh, he's being recognized for. And it's something that the Optimus Club of Yap by County in conjunction with Bradshaw Mountain High School and the town of uh, Prescott Valley get together and uh, bestow this honor upon uh, various students throughout the year. And so it's, it's not a competitive thing. I, it's something that uh, faculty and staff uh, look at their students and determine who they feel is somebody that we should recognize for their achievements, not only academic but in in uh, uh, the community as well as church and, and other outside activities. So we love to do this because I think it's something that uh, really reflects and exemplifies the values that the Optimist Club has and obviously Bradshaw Mountain and the town of Prescott Valley. So we're proud to have a student, a teenager in our community who exemplifies all these uh, different values. So we're here tonight to say thank you and congratulations. It's an honor to present this to you. And we start off this by um, reading some of the uh, accomplishments Liam has uh, achieved throughout uh, the year. And obviously it's not just one year, but I think through his uh, high school career. And anymore it is a career. You know, when I was going to school, it wasn't a career. It was just something among other things we did. But uh, I think uh, I'm very impressed with the caliber of students that we see every day now uh, who... Uh, really go above and beyond and achieve things I never even dreamed of uh, when I was your age, Liam. So congratulations. And it was something that uh, I discussed just briefly with Court, the principal, Court Minor, that uh, he actually has a resume. And sometimes we don't see uh, information uh, like that. But he's ready to go. I think he's, he's, he's ready to start his career after he graduates. So I'm going to give you a little idea of where he is uh, in, in terms of academics, and that is that he's uh, involved with College Prep English 101 and 102, which are dual enrollment uh, classes, and those are things that not only he goes through the high school uh, English, but also through, I would assume, you have a high college as well. And so it's something where he's doing twice the, the work that uh, a normal uh, high school student would, would be going through. He has, he's an advanced placement student in statistics, language, and U.S. history. Uh, he is involved also, or participates in pre-calculus. I was lucky to get through algebra in high school. I'm not sure I passed that or not. Uh, he has two years of Spanish behind him. Uh, he's on the, has been on the principal's lists for 2015 and 2016, and has been on the high honor roll 2016, 2017. So obviously, He's recognized not only by his peers, but the faculty and staff, and he works hard to achieve those things. Some of the things that he has ac uh, accomplished in the community is he volunteers for Life Point Church and community activities uh, in and around Prescott Valley. He's a back office aide to the school, which is, uh, I think, goes beyond and above, I think, because when I think back to my experience in school, I couldn't wait for the bell to ring to get out of there. So. 
Um, and then he does do babysitting uh, for special needs children. And uh, he is the ball boy, has been for Northern Arizona Suns for 2017-2018 season. So he's a well-rounded uh, student. You can see that he not only participates and does well in school, but outside as well. He is a sports person as well. And uh, there's a long list here, so I've kind of uh, summarized it. He uh, participated in freshman baseball in 2015. He's been on the, the freshman JV and varsity football through 2015 through 2018. He's 2017 varsity competitive cheer. Uh, he's uh, looking forward to, I think, uh, or, or is participating in varsity track. And he has been invited. I think this is really uh, interesting. I had never heard of this before, but uh, obviously it's within the realm of the, uh, the school. Invited to the Gridiron Great All-American Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, to play in front of over 200 recru recruiters on January 5th. So I think it has something to do with your, your achievements in football as well. And I think Court will give us a little idea of what he does uh, in football. And he's talked about uh, uh, flying, you know, in either going through the Air Force, or we talked about the ERAU, uh, Emory Riddle, and he does have an interest in criminology and criminal justice, and I always uh, put in a plug from my alma mater, University of Arizona, so please consider that as well. So uh, there is some other academic information that the court minor, the principal, I think would be honored to uh, impart. Thank you, Mr. Whiting, Mayor Skoog, Vice Mayor Nye, uh, council members, distinguished guests, uh, my name is Court Miner. I'm a proud principal of Bradshaw Mountain High School. And um, I think uh, Mr. Whiting did a great job of uh, uh, talking about Liam and his well-roundedness. Um, I hope you heard of his academic prowess in the AP courses and the dual enrolled courses that you do take at the high school. Um, the college courses that you take at the high school, they're college courses. We have to cover the college curriculum. So uh, uh, the students get quite a rigorous uh, curriculum and um, have to maintain a, a C or higher in order to get that college credit, but at the same time, they're involved in many different things. Um, as uh, Mr. Whiting stated, uh, Liam spends a lot of time uh, in the community working with uh, um, the Life Points Church, the men's group at Life Points Church, as well as babysitting uh, three special needs children uh, through breaks um, and on the weekends. But as Mike was saying, uh, Liam's got an opportunity to go to the Great Iron Bowl um, to represent uh, his athletic prowess. So um, Mr. Whiting stated at the beginning, um, this is not a principal's pick, even though you heard he's been on the principal's list, and obviously he works in the office. I know Liam very well, but it's not my choice. Uh, my staff seems to do a phenomenal job every month of finding those students all right, that are out there um, that are making a difference, not only just in our community, but at the high school. Um, Liam has a uh, 3.667 GPA as we, that's through six semesters, we're getting ready to close number seven right now, and he's ranked in the top 20% of his class, uh, 76 out of 388 students. And I like to bring that up because it'd be real easy to pick the first, second, third, fourth, you know, ranked student at school. My staff doesn't just look at academics, they look at, uh, at the human, at the student, the impact he makes on the school, what type of human being he is. And once again, I think my staff has nailed uh, Liam Craig for our student of the month. So I'd like to introduce to you, or excuse me, it'll be my honor to introduce to you, Mr. Liam Craig. Thank you, Council. Um, I'd also like to thank the Optimist Club and the Town of Prescott Valley for helping sponsor this uh, event, especially for me. Um, I am very uh, proud of my family. They have taught me how to really go out in the community and help people out, and I feel like that shows great character traits, not just on me, but on them. I like to thank my mom, Lara Zellman, and my father, David Zellman, as they are exemplary um, human beings, and they really show me and teach me how to be the best person I can be, whether that's in school, academics, or just out in the world. And, yeah. We'd like to invite the parents and family to come up just so everybody can see you. You may be a little um, shy, but that's okay. And if you'd like to say a few words, fine. If not, that's okay as well. But we always like to recognize the parents as well because uh, Liam wouldn't be here without your help and support, and we recognize that. And obviously he's talked about what he's learned and gained from your family. Uh, would, would you like to introduce your, your siblings? 
Okay. Uh, the littlest one, this is Marlena. She's uh, my little sister. A little bit of pain in the butt, but aren't they all? Good job. <laughs> um, the tall one, he's Nathan. He's, uh, he's actually younger than me and still has a deeper voice and is taller than me, so a little bit crazy. And then we have Joe. Um, I get told a lot at school that he looks like me and uh, you know, not too shabby. <laughs> well, it's a great family, and we do appreciate the fact that you stand out at Bradshaw Mountain High School as an achiever. And obviously, it's not something you aim to do, but it's part of your life, and we appreciate that a lot. And we always say that we expect you, hopefully, once you've achieved what you're going to achieve, to come back to, to Prescott Valley and uh, be a, a, a member of our community as well. But you are now, and obviously, an outstanding <laughs> member uh, in, in our community. We have a few things we'd like to give you just as mementos. One's a certificate, just indicates that Liam Craig is a December student of the month. And uh, display that proudly wherever you can, at home or otherwise. And then we do have, here it is, a paperweight. And it just indicates Student of the Month, Optimist uh, International, and all the paperwork you'll be going through as a student in the next uh, four or more years, or as uh, going through ERAU or Emory Riddle. Uh, there may be a time where you need something to keep those papers from flying away. So hopefully you'll use this and remember this night as an outstanding achievement on your part and remember us fondly, but congratulations. And I want to congratulate you. Very good. Liam, Laura has a Liam, comment. I want you to know that as a great grandmother, you give me great hope for my great grandchildren and that the type of country we'll have with leadership like yours, and I want to thank you for that. You. Any other comments, Council? I just have one quick question. Sure. Uh, they, they mentioned how many, how many college courses you're taking. Are you going to be one of those high school students that gets your associate degree before you get your high school diploma? Um, I wish that was the you don't use a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the case, but I did not uh, get signed up basically in time for the associates. Well, congratulations on the courses you took. Having taken calculus, good for you. <laughs> Thank you again. Do Mother, Father Craig wish to make, make a comment? 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say something really quick. Um, Liam, what people don't know, and he would never tell anybody, is that Liam has faced so much adversity, and he has overcome it, and he's been resilient through it all. Um, starting with birth, he was two months premature, but he fought through that. Um, and he has experienced things as a young child that no child should have to experience. But he has used that for motivation, determination, and drive um, in his character and even academics um, and what he does in the community. When it says that he works with three special needs children, he works with three special needs children that nobody would go back to to work with. Um, but Liam went back the next day over and over and over again. And so it, it shows that a lot about who he is. So I just wanted to say I'm so proud of my son and thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Liam. Okay. Council, have any other comments? I think we should remind everybody that we still have a big party to close out the year in our 40th anniversary, and that'll be New Year's Eve. Um, there's going to be games for the children. There'll be two separate sets of fireworks. So folks who have your, your dogs, take care of them because we do want to celebrate with our fireworks. Uh, I understand there will be some hot beverages and they will be of the family type. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. So I think everything kicks off at 6 o'clock at the event center. So get out there as a family and just celebrate the end of the year in a safe, sane party atmosphere. Marty? 
Yeah, uh, just a quick reminder. There's going to be a Youth Citizens Police Academy during the, uh, the break from January 2nd to 5th. I know they have a limited number of students, but all the information is available on the Prescott Valley uh, website, pvaz.net. Uh, you could also call uh, our uh, information officers over at the police department. They could fill you in and give you an application. So uh, hopefully they have filled it, but if there are still openings, uh, you know, if we have enough people, there'll probably be another one next year or f later on in the year. So, you know, even if you get shut out, make sure that you sign up so that we will have another one because that's how we work with the Citizens Academy with the town. So, you know, just letting you know what's out there. Thank you, Marty. Any other comments? If not, we'll go on to the, uh, cons or the consent agenda, which Jody Rooney will read. This will be her uh, last chance, at least in this. Uh, <laughs> All matters listed under consent agenda are considered routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately for discussion and possible action. Item A, approve the transfer of funds in the amount of $8,912 from the library facilities operating expense budget to capital site improvements to replace the library main entrance door. You who? <laughs> <laughs> item B. Reject all bids submitted for the Juniper Silt Dams Construction Contract, CIP number 433. Item C, approve budget transfer from the contingency funds in the amount of $12,683.71 to the Police Administration Operating Legal Services line item for legal fees associated with the Public Safety Personnel Retirement System Local Board. Item D, Approve acceptance of the special warranty deed and easements for the Viewpoint Spouse Intersection Improvements Project, CIP number S168-2. Item E, authorize the mayor to sign resolution number 2079, adopting 38 ASLAPR schedules as updates and approving the revised town policy number 5-03. Item F, Approve amendment to professional services agreement between Town of Prescott Valley and Civil Tech Engineering Incorporated for, and that CIP number W343 in the amount of $8,952. Ooh, that would be a big one. To design the new recharge basins. Item G, approve November 27, 2018 and November 30th, 2018 selection committee minutes. Item H, approve financial report. Item I, accounts payable. And item J, approve department reports. Thank you, Jody. Do you want to uh, approve it as a whole or do you want to pull uh, any item for separate discussion? Marty? If there's no one wants to pull anything, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mr. Mayor, I'll second the motion. Okay, with a motion and a second, would you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we go on to number eight, second reading of uh, ordinance number 853 by title only for the second reading, adopting by reference that certain public uh, record entitled use of household or handheld mobile communications devices operating, operating a motor vehicle. Uh, Ivan, do you have any comments on that? Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I don't have any specific comments except to remind you that uh, if this is adopted this evening, it would become effective on uh, January 19th. And uh, as I understand it, uh, the police department will then have a period of, uh, of enforcement where they'll initially start with uh, giving people warnings, and I think the chief is going to comment on that.
So that's correct. If it passes tonight, it goes into effect the 19th of January. We are going to do an information and a warning campaign until March 1st and then start writing actual violations March 1st. So it's about a five and a half, six week grace period, if you will, so we can get the word out and hang the signs. A nice sign back there at the back of the room. Good. Any uh, questions, comments? Anything else, Ivan or Chief? That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. With that, uh, I would uh, instruct our town clerk to read ordinance number 853 by title only for the second reading. Diane? Ordinance number 853, an ordinance of the mayor and the common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, adopting by reference a document entitled Use of Handheld Mobile Communication Devices While Operating a Motor Vehicle declared by resolution number 276 to be a public record, which enacts section 11-02-180, use of handheld mobile communication de devices while operating a motor vehicle in article 11-02 traffic control in chapter 11 traffic in the town code of the town of Prescott Valley, providing that all other chapters, articles, and sections of the town code not herein repealed, reenacted, or amended, shall remain in full force and effect, providing that if any provision of this ordinance is held invalid by a court of competent jurisdiction, the remaining provision shall not be affected, but shall continue to in full force and effect, and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law. Thank you, Dan. With that, uh, <laughs> shall the ordinance pass? Would you set the vote, Diane? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we're going to nine, number nine, new business for review, comment, and or possible action. A is public hearing presentation on development impact fees audit. Okay, uh, Katie. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council. Tonight, um, Michael Lazan from Heinfeld and Meach is here to discuss the impact fee audit um, with you all. And then later tonight, we'll be back up to discuss the CAFR as well. Thank you. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Vice Mayor and all members of the Council. Uh, I'm here tonight for the first part of the presentation uh, to talk about the uh, land use assumptions infrastructure. It's essentially the impact fee uh, report. So because the town has adopted impact fees, you're required to uh, have those reviewed every two years and have a report issued, uh, which looks at uh, a couple different things. Uh, the first thing is making sure that the receipts that come in are uh, the customers being charged fairly and equitably. Uh, in accordance with the adopted fees. And in that case, we tested a sample of 40 cash receipts and did not have any uh, issues there. So the money was re been received and charged correctly. And the second part of that is testing a sample of expenses that co are coming from those impact fee monies and making sure that the money is being used in a way uh, that's allowed under the plan that was adopted by the council. And in that case, again, we tested a sample of transactions and once again had no uh, problems or findings there. So the money's been used appropriately within our sample size. And the last part of that plan is to kind of look at some of the um, assumptions that were made by the uh, team that developed the actual plan itself and just comparing some of the variances uh, of projected population growth, uh, projected housing growth. Um, and, it, it, and that's part of the plan where what people project into the future doesn't always exactly happen. And so there's some variances there, um, but that's kind of to be expected within that, um, within that type of plan projecting into the future. So the good news is you are in compliance. You now have had the uh, report done uh, and submitted to the council now for approval or any questions if you have any. Questions, comments, anyone? Public, no. have any comments, question? Read no comments tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. He's asking if there's a copy of the report available. It'll be on the website. Yes. Any other uh, 
comments? Anything else? That's it. Round one is... <laughs> well, that was easy. Anything <laughs> else, Katie? Not until we come back up, but thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. If that's it, then we're going to uh, declare the public hearing closed. And we'll go on to uh, number B, public hearing again. Minor amendment to general plan 2025, GPA 018-003, Jake Investments Company, or Limited, LLC. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, first I would like to discuss, uh, I'd like to cover at the same time, this uh, GPA 1803, items B and C, and also discuss uh, <clears throat> items D and E for the zoning map change uh, <clears throat> 1808, and then uh, be available if there's any uh, questions along the way. <clears throat> this is a request by Jake Investments, LLC, for approval of the general plan amendment uh, for medium height density to regional commercial on uh, the subject vacant lot uh, 6742 in Unit 16, uh, illustrated here. And the purpose is ordered to allow a zoning map change to adopt the zoning and district designation of P1 parking to develop additional parking in conjunction with the previous combined lot uh, 6741A as illustrated. As uh, shown, the subject lot uh, is in the FEMA floodplain. Uh, the existing P1 parking area is also in the floodplain and is used for parking and vehicles in conjunction with the existing Yavapai mechanical business and buildings on the adjacent property to the south. The zone C3 minor industrial, uh, which is rezoned in 1990. Uh, all of the lots uh, uh, comprising the P1 parking were combined by reversionary plat in 2002. Uh, the intent is now to rezone uh, the subject lot for additional parking and combine it with the uh, larger parcel. Uh, town policy is not to allow development in, conne in connection to town sewer systems within the floodplain, but uh, to allow parking on floodplain property when used in conjunction with an adjacent primary commercial use. Uh, the applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting and uh, there was uh, one person attended, there was no objection. The Planning Zoning Commission approved, considered uh, GPA 1803 along with ZMC 1808 at the public hearing on November 5th, 2018 and voted unanimously uh, to record, to approve uh, GPA and ZMC to Council for Action. So if uh, GPA 18003 is approved by resolution, then the council can act on ZMC 18008, uh, which are items D and C. Uh, staff recommends approval. Applicants not here. I'll be available if there's any questions uh, on any, any items. Any uh, questions, anyone? Comment? Mary? No? No, sir. Pretty straightforward. Any uh, public comment? If there is no... Uh, Public comment, no other comment, no other questions. I'll declare the public hearing closed. And we'll move on then to, to uh, number C. And that's consideration of authorizing the mayor to sign resolution number 2081, approving the GPA 18-003, and to sign any agreement under Proposition 207, Jake Investments, LLC. Anything else you want to add to that? Any uh, questions, comments, motions? Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion. Okay. Motion authorizing the mayor in his absence of vice mayor to sign the resolution 2081 approving GPA 18-003 and to sign any agreement under Proposition 207. Second, anyone? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we go on to number D. Another public hearing. Zoning map change, ZMC 18-008, Jake Investments Limited, LLC. Joe? I've never discussed the action uh, taken on the ZMC and recommendations, so unless you have other uh, questions, I recommend approval of the uh, ZMC. Okay. And uh, no other comments, I take it? Council, any questions? If there be no further comment or question, I would declare that hearing closed. And we'll go on to number E, consideration 
of uh, reading ordinance number 855 by title only on two separate occasions and then place the same on final passage ZMC uh, 1808 Jake Investments okay anyone got a motion be motion commotion promotion Mike Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion to authorize the mayor in his absence of vice mayor to sign ordinance number 855 approving ZMC 18-008 and to sign any agreement under Proposition 207. I'll second. We get the motion in a second. Will you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. We go on to number F. Mr. Consider Mayor. It. We do need to have that first reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't have the material. You want to uh, do the first reading, Diane? Ordinance number 855, an ordinance of the mayor and the common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, amending the town zoning map by changing the zoning classification of lot 6742, unit 16, from R2-4, residential multiple dwelling units to P1 parking and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law. Thank you. Okay, we more, well, now we're going to F. Consideration of authorizing the mayor to sign resolution number 2080, adopting and approving a final development plan, FTP 18 -017. For Granville Unit 11. Joe? Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a final development plan for uh, Granville Unit 11, comprising 237 additional lots. Uh, bring the total uh, to uh, 2,741 uh, between units uh, 1 through 12. So uh, some of the public improvements for Unit 11 are underway, and uh, the town will receive the required financial assurances to ensure completion of all infrastructure uh, prior to uh, recording of the plats, uh, probably next week. And the way this uh, <clears throat> grand bill is going, it's uh, we'll have to find a new project for Joe one of these days. A, uh, with that, we recommend approval, and the uh, developer is uh, available if you have any questions. Comments, Joe? Again, council members, uh, this is the fifth plat we've been before the council in the last 14 months, and it's been a total of just a little over 750 lots. As of today, we have, uh, when these are finally improved, we'll have about 500 lots. It'll be the first time that we'll have um, almost 100 lots of each product line we have which would be the first time in years that we've had all the lots for all the products. So while the market is generally softer, you read about it, um, we haven't really seen it real extensively in Granville. We continue to start four houses a week and uh, been selling four houses a week. And we look forward, this will give us our, our uh, duplex product back. We've been out of that for almost a year now and there's a lot of demand for that so um, we're looking forward to uh, building a lot of houses we probably won't be back for a while 500 lots will last a long time a uh, couple couple of years anyway um, we are um, engineering the property just to the west of unit 11 behind the community center and um, there's another 350 lots in there that will be ready to go when the market comes or when we need them. And then uh, we only have um, three parcels left to develop in all of Granville. It's the frontage road along Santa Fe Loop Road um, on both sides of, uh, of uh, Tuscany. And then um, the site behind the school site. We're in the process of uh, filing a, a CLOMAR um, on that site. It's a floodplain. We're going to recapture the lots, uh, recapture the land for lots, and we're, we've scheduled some meetings to try and figure out how many lots we can get after um, the next unit 13 is complete. And we think we're going to be about 31 to 3,200 units by the time unit 13 is complete 
and that'll give us 200 units. And Richard and Larry said a long time ago they want 3,400, not 32. So we're working to maximize the, the zoning and the water resources that we have. If you have any questions. Questions, about. anyone? Ivan, did you have a question? No? Uh, Mike? Yeah, I was just curious. Do you have a profile of what your uh, traditional uh, buyer is, you know, if, as far as demographics? Yes. Um, the demographics are all retirees, pre-retirees. Th there's not many um, large job opportunities in the area. So we're seeing people uh, come uh, as pre-retirees or retirees. And last, this year, we've seen, um, we've kept track of where people are coming from, and they've come from 22 different states. They come from Alaska to Florida to New York. Uh, it's amazing to me how, um, how far and wide they come. And this is, they have opportunities to live anywhere, but they're coming. Um, good news or bad news, I don't know, but we're seeing a lot of Californians these days come. The, uh, um, the fires have caused uh, homelessness, and we've, we've seen a number of buyers from the Paradise area come in um, needing homes immediately. Um, and the, the demographics, our demographics are, I, I think generally you could say they're not happy with the way California is going, the way it's being operated, managed, governed. You know, um, their policies is driving people out. It's read about. I mean, it's not, it's, I think it's common knowledge. There's been a lot of articles written about it, how people are fleeing, and we can attest to that. We would, in previous years, we would see maybe, we keep track of our traffic counts of people coming through our models, and if we saw five Californians a week, that was a little bit high, but you know that was a normal number. The last last six months, it's no less than 25 per week, so it's really big, and we have affordability and um, amenities. And we have a real attractive community. We're we're just we're trying to get finished a new community center, which will be a 9,000 square foot. Um, fitness center and arts and crafts um, building and then there's going to be a, we're going to install a 25 meter uh, lined competition pool with a play pool, tennis courts pickleball, basketball all the amenities you might expect. It's going to be quite a facility we're really, this is going to be a star in Prescott Valley. Nobody has got anything or will have anything like this. This is uh, going to be a real amenity. We have it this is one of those things we haven't set a budget. We just said it needs to be done right. Whatever it costs, it costs. This is the, our last hurrah on community facilities. And um, I, I can tell you, you, the, you'll be proud of what we've been able to produce. So looking forward to getting that finished. Yeah, we appreciate the high bar you're making. And uh, it says a lot for our, our community and a lot for your product. So congratulations. Thank you. Mary? Well, you know, Joe, we've lived... Me and Kirk have lived over there now um, 12 years in Granville, and um, we absolutely love it over there. And just to um, bring a little bit back from the beginning of this development, I wasn't here. I didn't live in the town. But so many people have seen so many things go on so quickly over the last several years. But can you tell us just the about the year, I'm thinking it was about 1998 or so, when you guys really entered into the contract of developing this. Is that about right? Um, July 1st, 1998, um, I had previously been with Dell Webb, and we were working with Bill Fain to, um, do, to uh, undertake the development of the community. And I had left Del Webb in January of 98. Um, Del Webb walked away from the transaction June 30th. They notified Bill that they weren't going to go forward with it. And on July 1st, he called me and said, would you still be interested in doing this yourself? 
And I said, absolutely. Um, so we, uh, we put an agreement together, um, which I don't believe either one of us has looked at since the day we signed it. We did a partnership agreement, and he's one of the, um, not one of, he is the, the greatest individual I ever worked with when things, things didn't go well always. You know, we hit our ups and downs. The market was strong. The market was weak. And um, we both did whatever we needed to do. At, and, and I'm sure we violated our agreement. Both of us did. But we, we did what we had to do. Um, we undertook the development. We met with uh, Larry, Richard, and the then uh, town manager, um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Is it Morgan Tony? Mayor? Red Moran, yeah. oh. Over on, over on, um, off of Florentine. The, the town had an office that was uh, less than adequate even in those days, and we all sat in a room that uh, we had to hold our papers on our lap because there wasn't enough room for everybody to sit down. And over a period of, uh, I don't know, months, uh, we negotiated a development agreement. Um, we applied for zoning, and then the uh, the people that you see periodically that don't want anything to happen showed up. They forced a <laughs> referendum. Um, we took another six months to um, put together a, uh, um, you know, to hold the referendum, and that uh, that referendum uh, we received approval to go forward with the community. One of the things that I, I remember receiving a call from um, a homeowner somewhere in the town, and and it was a woman who said, are you crazy? She said, that you'll never be successful here. She says, there are no jobs. Nobody has any money. The, the best jobs are at Burger King, and you must be crazy if you're going to try and develop this. And, I told her, I said, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> so um, we just started out just one plat at a time. And um, in, in the initial um, development, we, we were convinced that you couldn't sell a house that started with a two. You had to be under, under 199000 And we even, we brought a house to market a little I think it was 1,200 feet, and we priced it at less than 100,000 so that we could advertise a house less than 100,000. We told salespeople they couldn't sell it, but we would <laughs> advertise it. But, um, and we, it is interesting, I, we never thought that we'd be able to sell a house to anybody from Prescott. There's such a issues and attitudes, and, um, but, we we put in sidewalks. We put the community center in. We, you know, we had model home complex, yeah. and we had affordability. In the first year, seventy five percent of our sales came from Prescott. Wow! They, they just flooded in. So it was really astounding. And today, you can't buy anything for under two hundred thousand. Right. <laughs> I, well, maybe two fifty is about as low as we go. So it's just built over the years. Um, I feel really good during the real downturn. We didn't cut our prices and give away our houses. We tried to uh, protect the community and people that invested in there, the, the homeowners. And, um, and the, we, well, while there were a lot of foreclosures, Granville, we kept track of foreclosures because I didn't have anything else to do. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we, Granville had the fewest number of foreclosures of any of the master plans in, right. in the whole area. So um, it's come back. You know, you've seen what's happened to the town. The traffic is horrible around here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, we're working on that. No. <laughs> yeah. But, but, um, yeah, we have a whole minute and a half. It's traffic jam. Crying out yeah. loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it's... Um, I've been really proud of this. I've done a lot of houses over the years and a lot of all over the Southwest. I've, I've probably been in charge of building over 15,000 houses. And 
when I got here, a lot of projects I've never saw to the end. You start and move on and do whatever. And this has been a labor of love. I, yeah. I, um, this is not about making money. This is about creating something that is real value to the community. And we, we've done things and to enhance the value of the community that are beyond our responsibilities. And we'll continue to do that. Um, we are, you have to make money or you go broke, right. but that is not, that is not our driving force. And we, on one note, we've uh, restricted investor sales. We, we, uh, a lot of people have money these days. A lot of people are looking for investment properties and we've got a great opportunity. We've had people come in and offer to buy 40 houses. And our policy is, will sell one investor property to an existing homeowner if they pay cash. That's it. Nobody outside the community can, can buy them. Uh, we can't control resales, right. but uh, our commitment is to our homeowners, to the community. We're not in the business of creating investment opportunities for people. So um, I, think, I think that shows in our homeowners who we have. and. I, I'm very proud of how this is coming together, and you can actually see the end of the line. It's uh, um, it, it's still going to be five or six years, I think, if we if the market doesn't fall apart. All oh, these days, who knows? It's kind of ugly what's going on, but we're we're seeing people coming every week, and that's encouraging. Thank Joe, you, Joe. Joe, do you got a comment? Thank you, Mary. Joe, you do ring value here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was so pleased to hear that you're able to bring the duplexes back. I'm seeing more and more generational living experiences, you know, with families, with grandparents, and the sandwich generation. I think that's wonderful you were able to do that. As you keep your numbers coming through and from all the states, what are you hearing that people are wanting uh, and they're looking for? You know, we've, we've developed, I think we have 22 different floor plans, and they each have an elevation, four or five elevations. So we've, we've kind of got a product for everybody. And the, the duplexes um, is, is a, a product that, it, that appeals to, we have a lot of widows and widowers. We have a number of very young people, first home. Uh, they can leave them, the landscape's taken care of. And then as you go through all the single family, four different series of houses, they, they each get bigger, 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 more amenities, more costly. And, and w so we, we have a little bit of everything. What's been interesting over the last year, our biggest houses have been the biggest seller. Um, we, in, as you go south into unit seven, we wound up having a hundred of those big lots for the Palisades product, and we were selling single digits per year. You know, it's like, you know, just didn't sell it. So we went up to the unit 10, and we didn't put many in, and all of a sudden we started selling seven a month. Wow. It's like, wow, how'd that work? But now, in the last three weeks, all of a sudden it swung back to our littlest houses. We're selling the little... Um, 50-foot lots, the least expensive, but the raise in interest rates and what you're seeing happen in the economy, uh, people are going down in size. So it's, fortunately, we got products for everybody, so hopefully we're always selling something. Laura? I know we need to move on, but, and I always thank you when you're here before us. I'm one of the people who moved here full-time in 99. So I got to watch all of this. And then I came on the council in 03. So you've been before us many times. What I want to do today is congratulate you and thank you for your due diligence, for your vision, your entrepreneurship, because you have definitely helped make Prescott Valley the place to be. And I don't want you to think those are pretty words. Those are facts. Yeah. And, and I just want you to enjoy those facts. Thank you. 
I appreciate it. I appreciate the comments. I, I think everybody will be happy with when we're done, what that's going to look like. I, right. I, we're Except willing to spend whatever it takes to make it look better than anybody's community around. Except for the new people that want to put a gate up. Yeah. And, and you've dealt with them beautifully, and I yeah. forgot to thank you for that. <laughs> there's, there's always people out there who understand it. <laughs> so are we ready for a motion? I thank think so. Tony. Unless there's any, any other questions? Well, I'd enjoy making that motion. I think we're ready, Laura. Thank you, Joe. And, Joe, thank you. Motion to authorize the mayor in his absence of the vice mayor to sign resolution number 2080, adopting and approving a final development plan plat FDP 18-017 for Granville unit number 11 by electronic vote. And I'd like to second that, Mayor. Okay, we have the motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Joe. Congratulations. Okay, we move on to number G. Consideration of, an ex of accepting a comprehensive annual financial report for the Town of Prescott Valley for fiscal year 17-18, available for review at HTTP. Uh, I won't read the whole thing. <laughs> because uh, Katie can say it better. Good evening you. again, Mayor and Vice Mayor Council. Um, coming back before you tonight to have you approve the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or our CAFR, which is our financial statements for last fiscal year, fiscal year ending 1718. And with that, I'll turn it over to Michael Lazan, who, um, again, from Heinfeld and Meach, who will go over um, the audit process with you. Thank you. Welcome back, Michael. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Uh, tonight, I am here to you for the round two to present the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. I'm the audit partner uh, out of the Flagstaff office for Heinfeld Meach. So I was in charge of reviewing a lot of this, so I'd be happy to answer any questions as they come up. Um, so first of all, a special thanks to Katie and Irina for all their hard work. Um, you know, really, I do about two pages of this report, and the rest is all them. And uh, it, there's a lot of information in there, and so, if you're having trouble tonight, uh, you're welcome to browse through that. Um, we are engaged as the independent auditors of the town uh, for kind of two different audits. The first audit is a financial statement audit where we uh, take a look at the financial statements, uh, the internal controls that are in place, um, and kind of give an, and give an opinion on as to whether or not the numbers, the financial statements are materially free uh, from misstatement. And in that case, you've got an unmodified opinion, uh, which is the highest opinion we can give. So that's great news there. Uh, in addition to that, um, there were no findings that are be were being required to be reported uh, either to the federal government or um, in, in in saying that the, any findings that are big enough to be reported on the financial statements. We did have some um, suggestions for some improvements on internal controls, uh, but of course that comes just with reviewing uh, the uh, different processes of the town. The second part of the audit is a federal audit. So because the town receives and spends more than $750,000 in federal funds, you're required to have what's called a single audit. Um, and in that case, for 2018, we were testing the uh, CDBG program, Community Development Block Grant program, um, looking at the two different projects, Longview and uh, the Boys and Girls Club. And Ryan was especially helpful in uh, providing all that documentation. And again, there, there were no findings, uh, and you received what's called an unmodified opinion on compliance, meaning that there were no material non-compliance issues with that program. So congratulations there as well. And so in addition to all of the comprehensive annual financial report, uh, we also do provide the audits for the eight different CFDs uh, that are part of the town, the brand new one being this year the Entertainment Center. Uh, we were also engaged uh, to provide some um, reviews on the Entertainment Center itself, uh, and that report's available. And um, there was also uh, the, the expenditure limitation report, uh, which we're required to review. And there's just a lot of different uh, aspects, but we are um, really happy with the town's finance office and the support they give us uh, in helping us with all the documentation we need. Uh, we are definitely a big disruptor to their lives uh, for the two weeks we're on site. 
and of course throughout the year with questions and uh, they're always a big help to us we appreciate that Good. any uh, questions comments I know everybody's read the report from the board. <laughs> page one to the end oh, I've read and... half of them <laughs> I'll admit to only getting through half <laughs> the second half you can read tonight that's right everybody else uh, read it all Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anything else you want to add to it? I, I do think it's important how clear it is and how easy for someone that would never be in accounting of every form can understand them. So I think I want to thank you for that at a minimum. Mayor. Mayor. I do want to thank I Katie am. and Irina for all the hard work that they did on this audit. This is one of their premier accomplishments through the year, the budget document being the other, but it takes a long time. And I was looking at their plaques earlier. I think they've won the GFOA award 20 consecutive years, or 19 or 20, and she'll be submitting this for consideration tomorrow, I believe. So no pressure, Katie, but I'm sure we'll, <laughs> we'll get the award. And I appreciate that, Ryan, but really it's the whole finance team. Uh, we couldn't do it without any of you know, our, our staff who really make it um, an easier process um, than anyone could imagine just because they are so good at what they do. Um, but thank you. Any other questions, comments? Anything else, Ryan? Mike? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. I know when I was working for nonprofits, the, you know, every, every year I dreaded that, uh, you know, review. And I think uh, once it's completed and accepted and uh, checked off, I think everybody feels very good that they did a, a job well done and I think we we can see that was the case so we appreciate your assistance in evaluating and reviewing our financials and appreciate your job as far as the, the work that you're doing and that we came out unscathed so appreciate that other comments Am I, I don't have a comment but if we're done I'll make a motion okay I think we're ready any yeah we're ready Okay, I make a motion to accept the comprehensive annual financial report for the town of Prescott Valley for fiscal year 2017-2018. Second. Well, can we have a motion and a second? Would you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Katie, congratulations. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to number H. Consideration of approving the purchase of playground equipment from Mountain Valley Park from Arizona Recreation Design via the G IGPA Cooperative Purchasing uh, Contract, quote number 3653TN, in the amount of 350867 And that comes out of whose budget? <laughs> You're up, Brian. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Mayor. PowerPoint show getting ready to start up here. There we go. Well, we have a little fiasco there, but we'll just keep on moving. Uh, the pro project that we have before you is for equip playground equipment at Mountain Valley Park. Uh, we are working within uh, the vision of this project that would retain all existing play equipment. We'd be expanding uh, the play value here, increasing also the safety uh, components of this. We'd be removing all of the current uh, safety surfacing material that is there. has been enhanced for a number of years, uh, but we're reaching that point in time where removals are necessary. Uh, we would also be improving upon that with also our ADA accessibility. On this project, we would have some pour in place rubber with some very specific uh, ADA play components uh, with that, and then also replacing or adding to that uh, entirely new uh, engineered wood fiber as currently exists here on site. Uh, our site is broken into two separate components. Uh, the first is the larger, which is located on the left hand side on your screen. This is your five and up. And then on the right-hand side is our five and under. And we're going to dissect this project into these two units and review each of them independently. Our first is our five and up area. And our new proposal to you is, again, retaining all of the existing play equipment. We will be moving certain components around so it helps increase and add to better flow and playability here at the site. 
Uh, that will be a movement of our existing swings. Uh, also our uh, climber unit, uh, which is on the north end, and uh, some of our ex uh, existing uh, step play components. And we'll see this in a following visual uh, later so you can see where all of the existing pieces and components are going and how these new units are being integrated. On this particular slide, you're seeing three of the larger elements of this. Uh, first being at the very upper part, that big blue island that's out there, that is our new uh, porn place uh, safety surfacing material. Uh, this aids those that have uh, challenged walking or are chair-based. Uh, this is a direct uh, uh, ability to be able to access the uh, play equipment that we have. Specifically in this case, this is an ADA surface spinner. So literally you do not transfer out of a chair or any other mobility device, you literally engage directly into it. Uh, right. And then uh, it is a uh, merry-go-round, if you will, uh, one of the modern versions of such. Next to that, uh, you'll see this large uh, cone facility. Um, this is uh, an exciting little play apparatus. Uh, if you remember back in the old days, we used to have the little pivoting merry-go-round. Well, we always got to smash our knees directly into that pole. Well, they've gotten a little brighter in playground manufacturing uh, components today. Uh, this is our uh, Apollo uh, spinner. This is a combination of the old play. It does rotate and spin, but it's also a two-tiered, two-level uh, climbing uh, component as well. Uh, so you literally can climb up to the second level, climb inside of it, hang out a little bit, spin, hang, do all those kind of cool, crazy things. Uh, tons of fun and playability. And then immediately to the left of that unit is the new crazy wild uh, item that's out there. This is, we're calling this the Big Orange Crush. Uh, it's actually termed uh, Shoot the Curl. What is fun and exciting about this is as you walk around the playground itself, it changes in shape and folk function and, and uh, view shed on this. So it's almost like a playable piece of artwork out there too. So uh, a lot of fun. There's a, a balancing, bouncing walking plank that runs through the body of this particular piece. Uh, it stands about 15 feet tall. It's about 15, 14, 16 feet wide and 40 feet long. And it is interweaved uh, with all of these climbing cables uh, that you can spider monkey throughout the entire uh, play site. Uh, we would be literally the only agency in all of Air, uh, northern Arizona. I'm a, a familiar with uh, two separate play sites down in the valley. One is a giant monstrosity. Uh, I believe it's down in Glendale. The other is, unfortunately, uh, the Cardinals don't have a spring training facility here for their baseball action, so it's out in front of the Cubs spring training facility. Mm. Uh, but they literally bust people in, and that's all they do. They come to play on the playground. There's no need to go see a Cubs game. We all know that. So they're all out there having a great time uh, doing those little things. What's that? Showing your bias. Ooh, no, not at all. Not at all. I'm putting some blue in the playground. That's pretty good. So there you are. Um, They'll get you. They always do. So, um, but uh, as we travel through this, uh, so you get a little bit of an aerial on the on the big orange uh, crush or twist there. Uh, we'll transfer to our next slide. You can see all of this from a ground level perspective. And again, play, pay close attention to the orange piece. You'll see all the little twists and turns that it has. We're going to move over to our third perspective here, and now you have an entirely different view shed on that particular piece. Um, so this is kind of the new wave of, uh, of activity that's going on there. It has a high degree of uh, physicality to it. A lot of outdoor-based element is into this. Um, so we're very excited about this uh, particular opportunity. Again, you find nothing like this in northern Arizona. Part of this goal was is because it's Prescott Valley's uh, regional park, all the different activities that we have going on there, not only in service to our community, but also in service to those that are visiting our community, hosting the numerous uh, tournaments that we have, athletic tournaments going on. Uh, a lot of those perhaps are locally, but we also provide a lot in regards to regional and national tournaments as well, uh, that this is a very 
highly sought after side amenity uh, for those visiting families that are coming into town so they can get out there and play and have a great time. How, how tall are those two? Uh, this is a little disproportionate because of the That's view shed, but I both thought. of them are right around that 14 to 16 foot high. Gotcha. Um, the width on the orange is right about, again, 15 to 16. Uh, the uh, spinner cone, if you will, uh, the Apollo uh, there, that again is right about that 14, 15 foot height mark, and it has a diameter of about 10 and a half, 11 uh, feet. So you can get multiple people inside of that rascal and, and yeah. have a good time doing those. Uh, this is a top-down view. Uh, this is giving you a little bit of a view shed in regards to how we'll reconfigure uh, the existing play equipment. Uh, so you'll see in the uh, high uh, color purples and pinks and greens and the curly cube blue that's found on the right hand side, that is all of our existing uh, main playground uh, infrastructure. We're going to take the, the blue squiggly thing, and I apologize because my uh, my software on my desktop and this software are not meshing together to allow me to use some of my uh, pointer features here. Uh, but uh, we're moving that from the uh, northern end of the playground area, making way for the Apollo spinner, bringing it down so you'll have transfer in and out of the existing play unit by con connecting those pieces. Uh, we're also relocating the balance play feature. That'll be found between the playground and the swing sets. The swing sets, instead of uh, remaining on its east-west axis, we're turning it on a north-south, again giving way to allowing the shoot the curl ropes course to be able to jump in. And then the large section in green, that is all of the new pour in place uh, safety surfacing that's coming on board. Uh, we're growing the environment a little bit uh, there, so you're seeing some of the cutout on some of our existing curb structures. Uh, but uh, we're allowing for a much higher volume play uh, and greater integration here in doing this. Our current play equipment was put in in 2002. Uh, it's weathered the test of time very well. We're adding some new elements to it as well, uh, and that's why it's very encouraging to be able to have that play equipment there on site. Now we'll take a peek if there are no questions as uh, we're looking at the five and up, we'll go ahead and transfer our view over to our five and under uh, play area. Uh, this is a visual of our current equipment as it exists today. And this is what we're looking at adding to in addition to what we were just looking at. Our very first item, you'll see again another island of blue. These are opposing each other, these islands of blue. So you'll roll from uh, one island of blue in the five and up directly into the island of blue on the five and under. Uh, this is an ADA inclusive um, spinner uh, that we have here. Uh, if you've been able to uh, venture out over to George Anderson Park, you're seeing a similar type a piece of equipment. Uh, we have our inclusive uh, green spinner at George Anderson. Uh, this changes a little bit. Uh, this is more of a vertical upright um, ADA inclusionary spinner that we have here. And the other nice part about that is, uh, if you remember the teacups at Disneyland, where you were able to get in there and spin your teacup yourself, that's exactly the same premise that we have here in regards to that direct interaction and physical uh, interaction uh, going on with this pay, play equipment. Just uh, to the west or east of that uh, particular spinner is the spider climber. So again, it plays off a lot of the rope course on the older uh, place group side, as well as on the very center of that is a nice uh, fun bouncing trampoline section. So again, multiple age groups can interact, have a lot of fun. We have direct connectivity and flow throughout the uh, play area. And our next slide will give you a ground level uh, view shed of those two pieces of equipment that we have there. And then in our next slide, we will be looking specifically at that spider climber. Uh, so you get a better idea in regards to that ropes course for our five and under uh, visitors. And then last then a visual of a top down in regards to 
that integration uh, with current play equipment and then also the slight adjustments that we're making within the safety surfacing so that everybody can be out there having a good time and uh, bounce and jump right back up and continue going at it. Okay. Any questions on the five and under section? Questions, anyone? No. Okay. Fabulous. All right. Great. So this is how we see it today, and this is how we'll see it in the future. So it gets quite busy fast. Yes. And that's what makes it fun. I especially enjoyed <laughs> in the paperwork that we have uh, the pictures of the children underneath on the individual pieces and the grief I want to go play on <laughs> that being the whole point yes ma'am I'll get in trouble but I still want to do it <laughs> no it's not new any right. other comments questions I, I want to thank you I find it very sculptural I think it's vivid and the shapes are are fascinating and thank you for bringing the modern day playground equipment to us. That is what I'm most delighted about. Marty? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, when all this reconstruction is taking place, uh, will the playground be out of use for how long? Yes, sir. We're anticipating anywhere between a two to three week window. Uh, in which we're going through all of the removals of the existing safety surfacing. Uh, there's possible excavations that will be going on. We'll have to do some curb cut, repour, uh, bringing in all of the uh, compacted materials. But we're hopeful that we'll have this done uh, by the end of March uh, so that we're ready to go for some of our upcoming athletic tournaments and activities that come into the park uh, by that time. Mother Nature treats us well. Uh, so it would be about an 80-day um, delivery from right now. And then, um, again, like I said, that two- to three-week window in which this site would be closed. And so it will all be perimeter fenced and secured uh, exactly in the same format as what we had previously done at George Anderson. Let's tell them to go to George Anderson and get a preview. Well, you know what? These guys are pretty competitive, and they said, oh, George Anderson's got nothing on us. So we'll see. Well, we'll, we'll see. find out, won't we? <laughs> I can't wait to play on it. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Ryan? Mayor, just one comment. We had a public hearing earlier for uh, development impact fees. That's what's paying for this project 100%. So if you yeah. think about existing residents having paid for the existing structures, the, all these new houses that are being built, they're being assessed a fee which is going, which is being used to construct new equipment. So growth is paying for growth. Yeah, and I'm going to get really political now. We've got to make sure that the state legislature doesn't take away some of those local control decisions. Any other comments? Um, motions? Anything else, Brian? No, sir. Any motions? Commotions? Emotions, anyone? Mr. Mayor, I'll be happy to make a motion okay. to approve the purchase of playground equipment from Arizona Recreation Design via uh, one GPA cooperative purchasing contract, quote, number 3653TN in the amount of $350,867.48. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Council approves. Brian, you can go to work. Thank you, sir. Okay, we go on to number I. Uh, consideration of accepting the donation of horse sculptures from Jean I don't know how you pronounce Galiz Galizan. Galizan, yes, sir. Into the arts, art at the uh, center permanent collection. Yes, sir. Uh, staff has been uh, approached by Mr. Galazan. Uh, his work has been part of a collection series over at the Fippin Museum. Uh, his herd, uh, he has decided he would like to diminish and share uh, throughout the communities. Uh, so he has approached staff, uh, presented this opportunity of uh, potentially up to five of these abstract uh, wild horses uh, that would then be added to our permanent collection. 
uh, for the Art at the Center program. Uh, in review with the Arts and Culture Commission, uh, they are recommending acceptance of these particular pieces of work and are actually also recommending two possible locations. Uh, the first is Fane Park, which would be on the south bank as you look across the lake from the parking lot as one of those possible locations. Uh, staff is concurring with one of their other recommendations, which is the uh, Summit Trail pathway. Uh, it's a very natural, pristine area. It reflects a lot of the other wildlife uh, opportunities, and it would be just directly west then of the main gate or uh, access gate uh, leaving the parking lots. Uh, so it would be off to the side. Uh, we would try to put it and work with it in a uh, natural state um, and also then add signage uh, to the site located directly to the trail, identifying it and giving background information. Pardon me? I'm highly prejudiced to these horses roaming free along the summit trail. I just think that's the perfect location. I'd, Other Mary? I'd like to agree that the Vice Mayor has a good <laughs> idea. Any Works other? well with the cattle <laughs> and antelope as well. Does anyone look good in my yard? <laughs> it look good in your yard? Your yard we'll we'll talk to Jean on your behalf. How's that sound? So. It, it's not that Thane isn't a lovely spot, but the, the design of them, they need that open space. Yeah. No, you don't want it to go. No, no, no. no. Don't. Okay. Uh, I won't even repeat that. So. <laughs> I think this is an awesome gesture by our, our artist, and I would love to make the motion on this. Yeah, I think we're ready. All right. I make the motion to accept the donation of the sculptures into the art at the center permanent collection. And I'll second that. I'm yeah, sorry. we all want to second We have a motion, <laughs> motion and a second. Set to vote. That passes unanimously. Brian, go for it. Thank you, sir. Okay, we go on to number J. Consideration of approving the purchase or of a replacement evidence refrigerator at the police department for $12,198, requiring a transfer of $5,000 of police evidence capital specialty supplies account. Number 101-6440-700-6120 from the K-9 dog capital account, 101-6220-700-7400. And a transfer of $7,198 from the contingency account, number 101-9500, 919, and 8999, into the police evidence capital specialty line items, 101-6440-700-6120. We should add Katie here to read that one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor and Council, I'm, I'll try to make this brief. I know the meeting has been long. We had a refrigerator that broke. We need a new one. That's pretty brief. That's, uh, that explains it all. Perfection. Right there. Yeah. It's, this is a, a commercial refrigerator. It is where they keep evidence. So when the officers walk into the initial portion of the uh, evidence processing area, if they have to store blood evidence or something, they, they put it in this refrigerator. Well, it's been broke for quite a while. It developed a um, freon leak that we are recharging every three to four weeks at the tune of about $400 each time. So we've probably already paid for one, but now we really want to get one so we don't have to keep doing that. It is completely out of service. We're not putting any more money into it. And the problem with that is if any of the officers come in to, to put in blood evidence into the refrigerator, they can't, so they have to call the evidence supervisor who has to come all the way in to get into the secure areas of the property room to store it. So this is something we, we need very badly. Okay. Any questions, comments, motions? I'll make a motion, Mayor. <clears throat> Mary? Um, motion to approve the budget transfer from the contingency funds in the amount of $7,198 to the Police Evidence Capital Specialty Supplies. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote?
That passes unanimously, Mayor. Chief, you can put the refrigerator in. Put it on ice. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. And I want to take this opportunity to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. And you back too. At June, you Chief. too. Now we go on to K. Consideration of reading ordinance number 854 by title only as an emergency measure, then place the same on final passage, authorizing an exchange of described properties between the town and Arizona Eco Development for Little Pete Well, CIP number W442. Neil, you are up. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. As you've noted before, uh, before you have a um, proposed property exchange um, for the Little Pete Well site, and uh, we did talk about this in um, work study previously. Uh, essentially, uh, we're swapping property with an adjacent landowner, and the um, the map that I've got up on the screen right now um, shows the location of the town's current well site which is immediately west of the property line for the viewpoint subdivision. And we are proposing to swap it for a similarly, similarly sized parcel about another half mile west of that location. And so um, all of that section of land, which is 640 acres, is owned by Arizona Eco Development. Um, and so we have uh, talked to uh, Mr. Jason Giese about allowing us to swap some property with him um, so that we could move the well site further away from the viewpoint and we would not be uh, disturbing the residents with the uh, construction that's going to be going on there for the next several months. Um, as I mentioned before, drilling a well is a 24-hour-a-day operation for three or four weeks on end, and that would be just for drilling the well, and then you've got equipping it and, and everything else. So. Um, we are proposing to move it, like I said, a half a mile to the west, hopefully to mitigate a lot of the negative construction impacts. Um, and so I, I think you have a number of things in your council packet. There are a whole bunch of documents that go with this, uh, essentially the ordinance um, uh, for the exchange itself, and then there's the uh, some of the warranty deeds and uh, condition of title reports and a public notice that was um, done as well. And so um, I guess with that, I would answer any questions that you might have. Questions, comments? No. I do. Emotions? You've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's on this. Yeah. So let's make a motion. Make a motion. We're ready. Whoever wishes. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion Thank to read you. ordinance number 854, authorizing an exchange of the described parcels between the town and Arizona Echo Development by the title only as an emergency measure, then place the same on final passage. Second, anyone? Mayor, I'll second that. Okay, with a motion and a second, would you set the vote, Dan? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Good job, Neil. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd also like to uh, thank Jason Giese for working with us on, on making this happen because I know it it would have been um, a pretty big nuisance for our residents. So. I think that's good thinking. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going to Jay. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we, we were jumping in. We need to read the ordinance yeah, and read go ahead and have the final deal. vote. So. Ordinance number... 854, an ordinance of the Mayor and Common Council of the Town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, authorizing the exchange per ARS section 9-04-0708 of a, a parcel of real property owned by the town for a parcel owned by Arizona Eco Development LLC needed for the construction of a new water production well and declaring that this ordinance to be an emergency measure pursuant to Arizona Revised Statute Section 19-142B and Section 2-50-060 of the Prescott Valley Town Code. Thank you. Get her done, Neil. Okay, we move on to number L. Oh. I'm sorry. What? I we, ju we just need to have the vote now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shall the ordinance pass? We just need to have the vote. Shall the ordinance pass? Okay. Is that the vote, Diane? She's trying. <laughs> if, if 
we can't get it voted on, Neil. <laughs> Shall I hold it? <laughs> there it there comes. Thank you, Diane. It came up, Neil. We're, you're rescued. Passes yeah, unanimously, Mayor. <laughs> okay, Neil. Now we go on to number uh, L. Consideration of approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Humboldt Unified School District for the purchase of real property, not to exceed $37,000 for the Antelope Well Park CIP number, W442. This is another one that you discussed earlier. So. It is, yes. Yeah. So this is a second well site um, that we are trying to acquire. Um, and uh, we did talk about this earlier. And uh, so we're proposing uh, to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Humboldt Unified School District for a piece of property at the Coyote Springs Elementary School site, um, which is shown on the exhibit in front of you. Um, we are actually looking at purchasing um, a small area of land that they were not using that's outside of their ball field, so it's outside the, the, the outfield fence and between their, their property line. So we would be purchasing that somewhat triangular piece of property for the actual well site and we would also be obtaining a temporary construction easement over the um, eastern ball field that they have there. Uh, there will be a lot of equipment there, and we do need a lot of room to, to, to drill a well and, and to um, equip it. And so um, this, act, this item actually went before the uh, Humboldt Unified School District Board on December 11th, and they voted in favor of this. So um, your action tonight, I guess, would would uh, finalize um, the action and then uh, enter into the agreement and we'd, we'd move forward and um, purchase this uh, property for uh, $37,000. So um, I think with that I will answer any questions you might have. Anybody have questions or want to finalize the agreement? I have a motion. <laughs> uh, before I make the motion, Neil. I want to comment and thank you and your team for all the good work you're doing with all our well issues and taking care of this community before we have issues. I, I, on behalf of our citizens and myself, I really appreciate that. The motion to approve the professional service agreement with Civil Tech Engineering in the amount of $88,483. That's, that's the wrong one. Wrong one. Yes. It should be the intergovernmental no. agreement. Oh. Well, somebody that's got it in front of them, go ahead and Here. do it. I can go ahead and make the motion. Approve an intergovernmental agreement with Humboldt Unified School District for the purchase of real property not to exceed $37,000. I'll second that. Sorry. I apologize. I'm just too eager. <laughs> you the motion and a second, anyone? That we've, we've got the motion in the second, Mayor, if you'd like to vote. I did it. <laughs> That's a unanimous vote now, Mayor. <laughs> it passes. You do it now, Neil. Okay, we're going to M. Consideration of approving the professional service agreement with Civil Tech Engineering in the amount of 88483 for Lil Pete and Antelope Well Side Design, uh, CIP, W442, and approve the necessary budget. Justice. Yeah, that's the one I was trying to read. <laughs> <laughs> wonder it didn't work. Yeah, so this item, um, essentially the two different properties that you just have approved purchasing or acquiring um, is where we are going to be drilling wells. And so we have already um, gone out for bid on drilling of the wells, and those, um, those will start here after the first of the year. We will start drilling. Um, but then after the drilling is completed, we will have to uh, equip the wells. In other words, we do the, the building, bring the power to the site, do the above ground piping, um, all that other stuff that's involved with a well. Um, and so we need to enter into a professional services agreement with Civil Tech to do um, that design work. And then ultimately we'll be coming back to you with a awarding of bids for, for doing that um, construction work as well. Um, but this is for, like I say, this is for the design now for both those sites 
uh, in the amount of <clears throat> $88,483. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I'd just make a comment. I know we, I remember talking about this in August. I know we had some issues. And it is kind of remarkable that we're this far ahead in drilling new wells for our community. And I know there were some concerns about, you know, the water issue in, in general, but in, in terms of not having those issues and relative to uh, having wells down one way or another. So I think we're all looking forward to this. And be happy to make a motion if there's no other comments. Yes, we're ready. Laura, start we are you ready. Finish it. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the professional services agreement with Civil Tech Engineering in the amount of $88,483 for the Little Pete and Antelope Park well site design CIPW442 and approve the necessary budget adjustments. Second. Try to, try to redeem myself. Okay. Laura <laughs> redeemed herself. We have a motion and a second. You said to vote. Before you vote, does anybody have any questions about Neil's sweater? Because it was an ugly sweater today. <laughs> he wouldn't. He, I saw the pictures. You were not in the running for ugly sweater, sir. I loved those pictures today. <laughs> if I may, Mayor, that passes unanimously. That passes unanimously. And we've studied that one a lot, so good for you, Neil. Thank you. Okay, Mike Whiting will read the uh, comments from the public, number 10. This is our last agenda item, and it's comments from the public. Consideration and discussion of general unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not request permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to five minutes unless additional time is granted by the mayor. At the conclusion of the unscheduled comments, individual members of the council may respond to the item addressed at the discretion of the mayor, or they may ask the town manager to review the matter or ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. Anyone care to comment? Glenn, you're up. Glenn Brower, Mayor. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council and staff, I've been here a short period of time and I've learned a lot about this Prescott Valley Township. I've attended at Academy, Citizens Academy, and I was appointed to the Board of Adjustments and thank you for the confidence for that. Uh, we have three members leaving. You know, I didn't really get to meet everybody that much other than here and in committees. But the three people that are leaving this uh, council have put in a service that we all wish we could do for each other. Um, the mayor, Michael, and Jody. And what I've got out of the three of you people is from the mayor a great sense of humor, which you need in this position. And from Michael, the voice, a radio voice, a mellow tone so great and so evenly taking it a great job. And Jody, for your smile. Thank you so much and a Merry Christmas to all of you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Merry Christmas. Anyone else care to make a comment? If there be no further comment, we have one more item to go and that's a motion to adjourn. Anyone care to adjourn or do you want to keep on working? <laughs> Mike? Mr. Mayor, the voice of Prescott Valley, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. No, I like that for a I'll second. Oh, it came. We get the motion in a second. We set the vote. Diane? Mayor, how do you wish to vote? Just did it. Thank you. That passed unanimously, too. I expected that. Thank you. And thank you all for coming and putting up with a long meeting.